Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. I'll share with us a few thoughts that the Lord put in my heart and I trust that God will help us. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 5. One of the most tragic things that has happened to the body of Christ, especially pastors, preachers, is that we have lost the spirit of the word. And I say this with a very heavy heart. There's so much of talking going on. Sunday after Sunday, talking. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I'm not against the theological understanding of the word. I'm not against the intellectual comprehension of the word. But if all we have to give people is just information, just rema in terms of new discoveries, we will never be able to produce a victorious army. Hallelujah. It doesn't take being spiritual to have information. It just takes being passionate. You don't have to be spiritual. You don't have to wait on God to get spiritual information. You see, the distinguishing factor, let me tell you something. Many people think it's just the new information that produces transformation in people's lives. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. There is a spirit that is behind scripture. One time the Lord opened my eyes. And when the Lord opened my eyes, I was in a vision and I saw a big, like an ancient door or a gate if I will call it. And when I looked closely, I found out that that gate was made of many smaller doors. Actually a door. Many smaller doors. Are you following me now? And on every one of those doors, a scripture was written. I saw the doors opening and closing. Meaning behind the letter, behind the grammar. Behind the Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic, there is a spirit waiting to transform people. The assignment, the ministration of that spirit is the spirit of life. The spirit of life. Not just the spirit of truth. The spirit of life. He gives life to the information you are hearing. And then you are empowered to walk in its reality here and now. So there is a lot of church going on. There is a lot of conferences and activities and meetings. But what we have done primarily as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is to reduce the ministration of the word to become an intellectual thing. So it's just about theological dissertations or Greek and Hebrew. Somehow we have convinced ourselves that the more we read Greek and Hebrew and express, you know... The words in Greek and Hebrew and bring new words. We think that the anointing is in the Greek or the anointing is in the Hebrew or the anointing is in the English or the communication. There is a spirit. There is a spirit. That's the reason why you can hear a very powerful message and not be changed. There is a spirit. Listen, 
as i'm talking to you right now there is a spirit that is compelling what i'm saying to enter you so that you are persuaded that's why you can bring somebody that is hardened somebody that will even swear that i won't listen to god i won't do anything and when he sits down under this anointing from the prayer to the worship there is a spirit there is a spirit are you getting what i'm saying now it is that spirit that makes the person just keep quiet later on and all of a sudden you are seeing somebody that you know was stubborn probably even insulting the meeting and yet he's silent and then paying attention listen i want to convince you that without the ministration of the spirit everything we are doing in ministry is useless get this get this get this there is a wrong wrong understanding about impact and transformation many people wonder why you go to certain christian circles and there is hardly any change for 10 years people can be in a church but there is no notable transformation the only thing is that they know the names of everybody and while it's good to teach people things like um you know accounting timekeeping other secular principles here and there there is nothing in life that will replace the ministration of the spirit not just being full of the holy ghost not just receiving the anointing the ministration of the spirit the participation that at every point in your dispensing of the word there is a light there is a life that's the only way your words can transform people let me tell you something I am always aware that it's a privilege for God's people to be gathered here week in, week out. Some persons have traveled from different states, different regions to be here. You cannot just come all the way to just come and listen to a, a presentation of Bible or just a religious Bible study. It's more than that. That is the reason why, let me tell you something. It's good to listen to tapes. It's good to read books but none of them can replace being in an atmosphere there is something about the atmosphere are you getting what i'm saying an atmosphere activates a lot of things there is something about you sitting down from the first time you come in and sit down even before the service starts proper there is already the ministration of, of the spirit going on convictions are changing ideologies are shifting death is being replaced by life the earthly is becoming the heavenly right that revelation listen let me tell you i've said it again and let me just use this opportunity to stress i absolutely believe that before jesus comes you see we've taught on the concept of immortality there's been a number of preachers who have brought that concept in the body of christ But what we have not taught people it is a scriptural concept the bible tells us death can be swallowed up in victory that the mortal can become the immortal that the natural the terrestrial can translate there is a provision in the kingdom that allows the natural to become divine are you getting what i'm saying now that divine dimension brothers and sisters is what we are called to demonstrate a believer must understand that there is nothing natural about you if you are not convinced about what i'm telling you you will never be able to do great things for the kingdom i know that here and there because of our humanity the attachment of this body somehow we tend to trivialize and we think that the activities of the kingdom must be done sensually and so we preach sensually we carry out all that we do sensually but there is a spirit there is a spirit that is the one factor that makes ministry different from business or makes ministry different from a, a seminar right that's the difference we have lost this spirit in crusades we have lost this spirit in conferences and you see that people sit down and they never leave with that transformation can I tell you something? The ministration of the spirit 
it's not just about understanding a topic it's about the presence of god changing you meaning if we come here and all we do is to sing you should still live transformed because you see the the concept of transformation is not just about hearing words alone when you are sitting in an atmosphere something begins to happen at once your convictions there is a shift there is an alignment that makes you and postures you to begin to receive of spiritual things first john chapter 5 verse 11 And this is the record or this is the testimony that God has given unto us what? Eternal life. The word here is Zoe. I know we talk a lot about it. Eternal life is not life after death. Listen, listen. Eternal life is not life. It's not the life you receive after death. Right? What happens after death is the consummation. The consummation. Right? eternal life is the divine life god's own kind of life being supplanted in a human spirit and finding expression here and now in the earth realm and the quality of that life if it is of god it should be able to conquer anything in this life including death but it is the ministration of that life that many people do not understand so we in, in the kingdom let me read the, the scripture let me not go ahead of myself it says and this is the record that god has given unto us what so it is clear from scripture that it has been given but how is the technology of that life transferred it says and this life is where it's in his son next verse it says he that had the son had that life and he that had not the son of god had not life watch this the bible tells us listen my goodness the primary purpose of receiving jesus that means you're coming to christ or you're coming accepting the lordship of christ in itself is not even the end it is the spiritual system with which the life of god gets to you the bible says the life of god is hidden in the christ himself right the son of god so the way you receive that life is to receive the son of god that's why we preach that's why souls must be won so it's it's not just trying to save people from going to hell alone it's the spiritual system with which the divine life gets to them i don't know if you understand what i'm saying now because if all that there was to being born again was going to heaven you would have left immediately you gave your life to christ so the technology is of course it secures your eternal destiny but the bible says god gave us life but that life is hidden in the son himself so that until you receive the son you cannot have life meaning you can be in church for years are you getting what i'm saying be around christian people for years but if you have not received the son it's impossible for you to have that life there are all kinds of life you can have your biological life you can have an occultic life sponsored by the agency of another spirit but if you are to have the very life of god so way god's quality and class of life you must embrace his son embracing the father will not give you that life hear me embracing an angel will not give you that life embracing revelation will not give you that life are you getting what i'm saying you must know what ministers that life it says and the life the office of the son of god jesus christ is the only means through which that life can be communicated how many people are in church they've been in church for years but they do not have this life of god because they have not embraced they are aware that the son of god exists are you getting what i'm saying they are aware that he died but they have not received of his life and the bible tells us that you receive now the question is what exactly is that eternal life what is eternal life really what is eternal life 
is it is it um is it a package that is given to us is it an inanimate thing that is just put in us is it a programming what exactly is eternal life i'll tell you eternal life is the presence of the eternal spirit of god in a man that's exactly what eternal life is eternal life is not a thing you are giving when you give your heart to jesus eternal life is the very entrance of the spirit of the living god to come and reside in you the extension as we call it in the greek alos paracletos the one who has come to be a representation of the ministry of jesus here and now in your life so my mortal body that if i come to jesus christ and i truly receive his son that life the only gate that's why jesus said i am the way not a way i am the way right so the spirit of life the very holy spirit can only find expression when you embrace the son this scripture is a clarification or an explanation of galatians chapter 3 right when you begin to read from verse 13 down the bible says christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law it says be made a cause for us look at me let me explain something to you do you know what makes the old testament old look up look up look up let me explain something to you do you know what makes the old testament old or when the bible talks of the old man he's talking about any entity that does not have the life-giving spirit is obsolete the spiritual language is old are you getting the point so it's not old because of time i don't know if you understand what i'm saying you know in the earth if if we bought this two years ago we say this is old this is new in the spirit old is only compared to its quality with respect to the presence of the holy spirit that means an ideology is old to the degree to which the holy spirit is not involved in it again the reason why we call the ordinances of the past is not just because a new one has come if the new one came and the holy spirit is not in it it will still be old are you getting what i'm saying now so what makes a thing fresh or new is not that it is happening for the first time it is the very presence the eternal life of god that seed that conquers death that conquers weakness and the bible so designed the body of christ watch this the body of christ is supposed to be the vehicle that hosts the holy spirit that's why the bible says for this cause because people cannot discern the mystery some are weak some are sick and some do sleep is that not in your bible he said there is a mystery of the body the mystery of godliness the bible calls it that christ can dwell in a mortal body he said if you do not discern it you will be weak you will be sick and you can even sleep meaning that immortality is only a possibility because of the presence of the eternal spirit of god but the 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 factor is this um in the kingdom there are two realities i want you to write this down what i'm teaching you tonight is powerful you will walk in the glory of god in supernatural dimensions if you understand what i'm saying there are two realities that every believer contends with or walks with number one is the reality in christ the reality in christ the beginning of the experience of the believer in the new testament starts in christ outside of christ there is no initiation into the realities of the new testament right the 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 whole new testament starts the pivot on which our ministration of life is built upon is in christ in christ in christ in christ never alone for with god all things are possible 
outside of him many things are not possible for in christ we are complete for in christ we are perfected are you getting the point now but then there are realities in christ for instance we are seated in heavenly places the bible tells us in christ the other reality is the experience of that truth here and now the experience of that truth here and now you can call it the reality in christ and then the experiential reality the bible tells us all through the new testament all that we have become in christ many times we do not understand why apostle paul when he makes certain statements about the believer he adds in christ and then we do not understand his communications some of us have been taught and maybe some of us sincerely misled that the moment it has happened in christ it means that the the experience of it is manifest here and now that's not true paul himself speaking to the hebrew church in chapter 2 begins to clarify right and he tells us certain things he tells us we do not yet see all things Let, let's turn there paul gives us a contrast that will help us in our spiritual growth hebrews are you blessed tonight i have the sun and i have eternal life he who has the sun has eternal life two verse seven and eight let's look at seven and eight hebrews two verse seven and eight it says thou hast made him remember paul was quoting from david it was david the son of jesse right the king who by revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom wrote this he said to none of the angels right has he said at any point thou art my son you know this and that he did not put the world in subjection to any angel and then the bible says talking about man now he said you have made him or in in, in uh, talking about jesus now in his earthly work he says you have made him a little lower than the angels the word there was mistranslated it's supposed to be uh angelio not necessarily like the beings but it's an expression of god himself many times you see the bible use the word angel to mean the very lord himself is that not true many times in scripture you will see that and certain times the word angel is written in italics meaning that there is more explanation to it it doesn't mean an angel like a messenger from the presence of the lord but god himself so it says the word there is supposed to be thou hast made him a little lower than eloha god himself the almighty so jesus lowered in rank for the purpose of coming to become a man in the earth right he says thou hast crowned him now he's talking about his coronation this was the coronation that david saw the lord said to my lord right sit thou at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool so he says it here that thou crownest him with what glory and honor and you did set him over the works of your hand verse 8 thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all things in subjection under him he left nothing that it, listen i hope you realize that in the new testament you are not anything until christ is first it are you getting what i'm saying now so every time you see the bible talking about man find out whether christ has become that thing if christ has not become it because he must be the firstborn in all things meaning the dimension that the christ did not show us a possibility of getting there is no point trying to get there this is what i'm saying are you getting the point we can contend even more than the earthwork of jesus because he said this verily verily i say unto you he that believes in me is that not in your bible the works that i do in other words he said my eternal life is not compressed to four gospels if i stayed longer i would have unveiled more possibilities now if you have my life I authorize you to keep exploring the possibilities and immortality is one of the possibilities in that life the 
divine health is one of the possibilities in that life the ability to live supernatural though natural is one of the possibilities we must be able to stretch the possibilities what are the contents of this zoe life what does it consist of what are the benefits why should i want to receive the life of god it's like a product you are marketing to me convince me why should i want it what is the excellency of god's life over my natural life are you getting what i'm saying so the bible tells us speaking about man but that man was not just man like you that man was first the man christ are you getting what i'm saying now i know that when you read this scripture he says who is man that thou art mindful of him that man is not just talking about the natural man he's first talking about the firstborn and all he has called into glory because he died as the only begotten son then he resurrected as the first of the begotten and from there he had 120 other begotten sons and from there there are many begotten sons so jesus is no longer the only begotten son of the father by the spirit of adoption we have come into that sonship too are you are you understanding what i'm teaching you and so the bible tells us that when you receive of that son you receive of that life that life is like a drug the presence of the holy spirit the moment he finds expression certain reactions begin to happen watch this he opens you up to the realities so jesus in the new testament becomes what we call our pattern man jesus came and walked for three and a half years to show us an example of what the zoe life is are you getting it? he was the first that opened us up to the possibility of the zoe life so when we saw the things that he did we saw the mighty things that he did the first that had the spirit without measure and he did so many things and then he told us that uh -uh, it is profitable for you that i go for if i do not go i cannot send the comforter he will come and continue he will be an extension of my ministry the holy spirit is to us today what jesus was to the 12 disciples exactly what jesus was to the 12 disciples the holy spirit is to us today that's the reason why there are no three thrones in heaven there are only two thrones in heaven but we agree that there is the father the son and the holy spirit because the third throne is in us there is a marriage that has been done never to be separated again are you are you getting that now it is him that takes us to the god class the presence of the holy spirit are we are we understanding what i'm teaching tonight so the realities in christ and then our experience of that reality the bible says something very powerful here it said thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet right for in that he put all things under his feet he left nothing that is not under him at what point did this happen to man jesus himself said this when he resurrected what did he say he said all hail he told the disciples he says all authority exousia delegated power has been given to me when he was in the earth all authority let me say something that looks controversial when he was in the earth all authority and power over all the earth was not given to him i hope you know absolutely that's the reason why when he was sending the disciples with his power he told them it will only work when you go to the lost tribe of israel don't go outside that jurisdiction is it not in your bible so when jesus resurrected he now said now the scope a coronation has happened to me right the same way it happened to adam that dominion mandate has been restored and he said now all authority has been given he says go in that light in other words in christ the bible says that we've been made to sit with him above all thrones and dominions and power and every name that is named both in this life and in the life to come 
that's what the apostle was trying to explain there but he leaves a disclaimer he says but now everybody say but now are you seeing in christ all things have been perfected but now the experience of that reality he says but now we see not what is paul saying now paul you just told us now that in christ all things are finished is that not true when jesus hung on the cross he said it is finished look at this the thieves that were on the cross one was telling him ah paraphrasing now we saw you do a lot of miracles is it that you can't bring us down from the cross another person was saying when you get here so they were all thinking of a lot of things but jesus said today he was giving him a revelation that in christ there is an experience so in christ you are healed in christ you are prosperous is that true in christ you are free from every yoke and every curse and everything but then translating that experience it does not just profit you in christ gives you access but it does not make it a reality that you can handle now there is a system with which you can take that which is in christ and make it happen here and now i hope you know that a man on a wheelchair the price for his healing has been paid why is he still on the wheelchair i don't know if you understand what i'm saying every sinner in hell today from the time jesus came the price for their salvation has been paid why are they in hell as merciful as the mercy of jesus is are you getting the point now so there is a difference between realities in christ and the experience the realities in christ give us a window to the things we can claim and the possibilities that are there on account of the zoe life that we have but that does not mean because you saw it in christ automatically it will find expression here and now i don't know if you understand what i'm saying so you can read in scripture that by his stripes i am healed but here and now you do not see that perfected in your life right you've seen that we've been redeemed from every curse of the law and all the ordinances the, the handwritings and the and all the things that have spoken against us they've been nailed to the cross but you are watching right there at 25 there was a miscarriage your younger sister at 25 there was a miscarriage obviously a demonic pattern finding expression so did god lie no it's just that we have not been taught the system of making the realities in christ to become our reality is god speaking to us now so most believers just see oh in christ and then this is how they respond god forbid i have seen it in the bible i will never be sick i will never be broke and then you are getting broke you are getting sick because what you saw is not a lie but the ability to translate it here and now have many people not read that this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall what how many people are casting out devils how many do you know in my name they will speak with new tongues how many innocent believers do you know have struggled for years praying and fasting for the baptism of the holy spirit and seemingly it did not come how many times have you walked to a sick body with every confidence the bible says heal the sick right raise the dead cast out devils it says freely you have received freely give in christ in christ in christ how do we make that experience here and now because if we do not learn this eventually we are going to hate god because we we'll think he's a liar a deceiver I'm very concerned let me tell you sincerely at how distant we are from the things we talk about the things we claim and the experience of the same are you getting what I'm saying there is too much talk in the body of Christ we must humble ourselves and admit 
that there are certain things we do not yet understand because there is too much talk about who God is what he can do we make such bold statements about God but when it comes to bringing God in the scene bringing his power here and now we begin to find theological explanations to excuse ourselves the Bible says for instance Jesus Christ the same when today and forever how many preachers do you know have said that how many of us men of God have said that how many of us have been able to reproduce that reality we must admit that there is something we are not understanding we must admit that there is a dimension of spiritual reality we are missing and let me tell you where we are missing it this is it Romans chapter 8 let me tell you where we are missing it very seriously and if we do not change a lot is going to go wrong Eight verse five. Eight verse five. In fact, let's start. Okay, verse five. Everyone read. It says, For they that are after the flesh do what? Do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Verse six. For to be what? stop the word carnal there is the word sensual it's not supposed to be it's not a bad word in terms of carnal doesn't mean immoral or maybe in a negative sense it just means that when you are carnal the limitation the scope of your judgment and your assessment of spiritual things is either intellectual scientific or sensual that's the limitation that's the circumference it says to be carnally minded whoever lives his life from that standpoint that your perspective about life is just how one plus one will become two it must be logical it must be scientific the bible says any man that thinks like that is already dying think about that it says for to be carnally minded is what death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So a man can watch oppression in his life and say, no, I went to school. What, what sort of oppression? I mean, if, if you fail, you fail. It's not any demon, anything. You see that? And then he does not know that the whole world lies in wickedness. That all that you see is not all that there is. There are many people, for instance, who look up and say there is no God because they are carnally minded. They, they reason from the sensual realm let me tell you the church of the lord jesus christ in a bit and i teach you principles we just finished having financial principles but in a bid to break life down into an understandable format we are gradually coming down from that height of spirituality to reduce god into a carnal mathematical formula so there is a there is a mathematics that is responsible for healing there is a mathematics that is responsible for a and b and c and then we throw the holy spirit out and gather those informations and feel on the strength of these informations i can make it yet the bible says all scripture was inspired was written right by the inspiration of who the holy ghost the very spirit of life the spirit of truth the one that was sent to make the reality of this divine life true in us we have thrown him away and we have reduced everything if you cannot explain it like mathematics i don't believe i don't understand i throw it away it's gradually destroying us even our presentation of the gospel we are seeking to make sinners as though the gospel is not supernatural we try to beat it down and make it as mathematical as possible whereas the bible tells us that as you are speaking to people the law of the spirit of life is supplanting the law of sin and death how do you explain that mathematically so there are people 
carrying all kinds of demonic substances and all medicine can tell you is this is this this is that you see it happens at times there are women who based on the way they are formed they don't have wombs you just happen to be one of them god is faithful and all of that and then you sit down and believe that that's how it is the bible says to be carnally minded let me tell you the truth if we do not grow i'm not against intellectualism right there's always that saying that you should not be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly relevance um, that is true but if you are truly spiritually minded you cannot be irrelevant to the earth are you getting what i'm saying see i read books i, I have studied a lot of people there is no man who works based on the truth of this scripture that will be irrelevant in this life this is the dispensation of spiritual men we have left dispensation of physical strength of giants we are we are gradually leaving the dispensation of intellectualism there are too many questions medicine cannot answer our governments are failing flawlessly because there is a principality that can sit down over a region and they try policies after policies here comes the generation of the spiritual men those who can tell the government you have done all you know to do can you finally pay attention to us those who changed the world in the bible were not just foolish people just intellectualizing everything these were men daniel daniel for instance he understood that persia there was a spiritual host of wickedness around that territory and he knew the key to sustaining a smooth flow of that government was prayer the moment he prayed the spirits of the medes and the persians were disturbed and they used individuals to pass a government policy don't pray just for 30 days can you imagine just 30 days of no prayer and we will wreck babylon and the king passed it and daniel said no i'm a spiritual man i'm not just i, I know i'm intelligent i'm a government representative but i remember the prayer of my fathers I, 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 are you getting the point i remember the temple of solomon it was solomon while dedicating the temple part of his request he said lord whoever faces this temple and prays hearken to them and he opened his window towards jerusalem he said i know i'm intellectual but i'm not so stupid i know the mystery that brought me to this palace because i came as a captive there was a mystery beyond mathematics that brought me here and then they caught him i can imagine other people saying well you claim everything is god 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 now let god save you and the lions were roaring brothers and sisters that was physical the lion is a fierce beast but there was going to be a playing of the spiritual the superiority the excellency of the spiritual as soon as he stepped in an angel came said daniel so you have not forgotten you have not forgotten where you come from how many of us have forgotten you see that there are so many people talk about god right now they become irritated if you talk in church it's okay but you talk about god outside to people they just say kind i beg jare you are talking business you are trying to scatter everything as though god is the reason why all things will not work let me tell you if you ignore god in any aspect of your life get set for a shock because the realm of the spirit is still alive and strong how many ladies think they will marry because they are fine they get up around they don't pray they don't listen they say god forbid yeah, i know that i know what god gave me be celebrating there until you find out that you are 45 years and as pretty as you are because there there are realities in the spirit my brothers and sisters there are realities i got a testimony from i got a testimony from um administration we went for in kaduna that 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 blessed me one of the pastors um came over to my place yesterday and he was telling me when i went for the meeting a woman was pregnant brothers and sisters watch this at least biology tells us i'm not a doctor there are doctors here um so how the child is supposed to be formed eventually for reasons they cannot explain the child started turning mysteriously no the child does not turn mysteriously something turned it 
let me tell you the oldest man in the earth is not up to 120 there are spirits that are millions of years you call satan a liar you are right you call him a deceiver you are right you call him a fool you are very wrong satan is old are you hearing that absolutely you know sometimes the way people just talk me god forbid my spirit can do this and that and that it's not all about this it's not and and while you are talking the realm of the spirit is just watching you how old do you know in bible days all of us are not even up to teenagers right now right yet the ancient spirit of god gives us a prescription about how to live and he says if you want life and peace be spiritually minded be spiritually minded do not let education do not let intellectualism money or anything take away that spiritual factor it has nothing to do with a man of god it is the key to life and peace we have thrown the holy spirit we feel he's only relevant in church right so when you go to your job and all of that people say now let's 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 be real let's be real while this the bible says i am the truth i am reality when god began to build and train me god made it a necessity and he let me know that forever in my at work the holy spirit will be and will remain the mystery behind any impact any transformation you see that for me the spirit of the living god is not just one nuisance that you have to embrace so that god will like you he is what you call eternal life if you are not aware of that be aware eternal life is not what he brings his very presence is the life of god jesus never became the christ he was the son of the carpenter he could die that's why his parents ran away with him but when the spirit of god came he made him the christ so when the bible says in christ it's not just saying in jesus alone in jesus yes but together with the spirit of life look at what we have taught people about faith today look at the, the nonsense that goes on in the body of christ that we call faith right we teach people all kinds of experiences as if it's voodoo that's why it's not working let me tell you faith is a product of an encounter when the bible says faith comes by hearing do you hear what you read answer me you see we need to examine he was talking it was a spiritual language he was not even just talking about hearing with the ear there is a quality of spiritual perception that an encounter brings and that's what produces true faith because when the bible says hearing and hearing by the word at that time there was no books like this king james had not authorized this so what did they call the word The days that are coming will be fierce. The days that are coming will be spiritual. Right now, have you seen the way the world is going lately? There is no embarrassment about spirituality again. Is that true? Everybody is opening up. It used to be in secrecy before. But right now, there is an open confrontation. It's like everybody is saying, Kai, I'm not hiding it again. I'm gay. Simple. Kill me if you will kill me. Up. It's not today. It has been like that another person saying it's not only you two of us too another person saying let me tell you i've not been a real christian this is my charm oh yeah you see everybody is confessing one by one one by one the meaning of that is darkness is about to reveal itself publicly right and it will bring everyone in a position to sustain a spiritual system to be higher than it or become a victim someone is building a house with blocks and cement when you are about to complete it and give thanksgiving the next week one small wind will just shake and you will come and not even see 
the two cores of blocks it will scatter everything what sort of wind is that is it now wind started how many hurricanes are on right now and scientists say they watch from space that before the hurricanes comes they see images of spirits doing things from the sea minutes later you see all the animals running they are still spiritual except human beings disaster hardly meets animals there they run away and leave us we are there trying to make money we are dead and we are dying like chickens this is a spiritual generation listen this is a generation where it's no longer the issue of are you a pastor or not to be serious to be spiritually minded the holy spirit is the advantage of this generation i am convinced that we are the generation that will return christ yes i am convinced the bible specifically talks about a number of things that as we call it that omega generation there are certain happenings that will characterize our generation hallelujah that we discern spiritual things let me give you an instance hold on let me explain something how many people in church today have thrown away the sacredness of being a man of God and the fivefold ministry in an attempt to balance these bossy things men of God do on stage right there are so many people who now challenge their pastors challenge everybody are you the only one who will preach are you the only one we have a democratic church that can vote out throw out pastors because of policies have you read in first samuel i can't remember i think maybe chapter 15 or 13 one time when saul is that true when samuel told saul that they should go and have a solemn assembly is that true he was coming to make a sacrifice they gathered the people it's in your bible and then saul told the, i mean samuel said he's coming at so and so time and he didn't come and they waited for him they waited for him they waited for him after they waited for him people were scattering and the ego of the king saul was was at stake and he said kai this guy is not coming let me what offer the bond offering as soon as he offered the bond offering samuel came and he said well uh I'm, I'm sorry honestly i was afraid it's not like i wanted i mean too i didn't want to do it the people were disturbing me and since you were not around i thought since i was a king let me do it and samuel said you have done foolishly he said if you had allowed me to come god would have established your throne so it would have now be son of saul not son of david he said because you have done this the kingdom is taken to you for god has found another man after his heart just for violating the priesthood how many people violate the priesthood today and they don't care right all kinds of people any man can get up at any point lambast any man of god write any article and speak and believe he will go scot free go and read your bible it's because we have become carnally minded we don't even know what it means to be a man of god we think being a man of god is choosing the vocation of preaching right So that when one walk or the other doesn't work or maybe you read something that you felt is, is not lucrative you just say talk it's okay at least you are preaching you see this is our mindset so we do not we have thrown the sacredness that is in the altar there were times in the bible that when a priest and a prophet was not available to do certain things they left it there have you read about uza in the bible i'm showing you how we have fallen from understanding spiritual standards the bible says we do not discern the body of christ and many people have received casualties because we do not know how the body was supposed to operate right remember that there was a time when the ark of god was being carried back and then he was about to fall and an innocent man called Uza, for his sincere love for God wanted to run and just block the ark what happened to him he died instantly 
Have you read your Bible when Miriam and Aaron looked at their brother and said, Kai, see you, you are our younger brother. Don't open eye for us here. Is it only you that God will speak to? Huh? We were all born by this and that and Moses didn't say anything. What happened? A cloud came at once. Miriam became as white as snow. White as snow. Right? And Aaron, Aaron, it was just because of the priesthood position that shielded him. We have lost touch with spiritual mysteries because we want to do everything carnally. When they tell a man that God is able to do a miracle for you and that in, in, in five months, God can open you to fountains of blessings. You know, they look around and say, eh, I know. It's not like I'm saying God cannot do it, but you see, we have to calculate how A will become B and how C will become D. Look at how people try to run ministry today. Right? They try to run ministry in all kinds of funny ways. Look at how people try to generate finances for ministry. When you see that, you know that we have hopelessly lost touch with spiritual reality. How did they build the tabernacle in the Old Testament? Because they were there for 40 years in the wilderness. How did the supply come? How did their clothes grow with them and their sandals? Today, if we were before the Red Sea, this is what Apostle Joshua Selma would have done. Engineers, where are you? The spirit of Bazalel. And then we'll start constructing a bridge. We'll say, that if I'm a prophet, in five years we'll cross this Red Sea. See that? That's how we would have worked. That's how much we have reduced God. That's exactly what we would have done. And then the engineers come. And we say, okay, let's start doing everything. Let's start, architects come. Let's start, and then where are the kingdom financiers? And then prayer department, where are, and then we keep praying. And God says, is that all to me? And then after five years, we say now you will cross the bridge slowly. And while we are crossing, we'll be singing choruses. And when we reach there, I will put a, menu, a monument. Prophecy walked into motion by Apostle Joshua Selma. Shame on us. Because we call that the Old Testament. We laugh at them. We even say they are a shadow of us. Are you joking? Read Hebrews 11. There are men who in their humanity, we cannot even touch their shoes. Yet, they, that's the Old Testament. We are very quick to say it's old. We have done away with it. But we have not done one tenth of the things that they have done. It's in your Bible. People invoke angels to use hailstone and stone their enemies. When was the last time you saw that? When was the last time you saw angels pursuing Boko Haram with hailstones? You are laughing. It's a serious thing. Look at bomb blasts happening on around. And there are men of God all around. And we claim we are anointed. They even put it on our posters when they invite us. Anointed man. Joshua Selman. Shame on us. Let me tell you. If this is what we think will bring Christ back, we are joking. How many barren women have we been unable to solve their problems? Look at, look at Jesus. Jesus inspires me. These guys who were with the guy that was crippled, they knew that if they could only see Jesus, that situation would be over. Is it not in your Bible? And they said, let's tear this man's ceiling. We will explain it to him afterwards. Today we brag and compare ourselves with ourselves. Is that true? And do a lot of carnal things. There is almost no difference between what we do and the supernatural. Or and, 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 and that of unbelievers. If I stand right now and I minister to Sam and he falls under the anointing, people shamefully write an article and say he's using witchcraft. Where did we leave our spirituality? Is it not in your Bible that Jesus with the divine life walked through people on a cliff? They were trying to kill him. He walked through them like a spirit. Where is that generation? I wanted to show us a video. It's just that um, we, we, we didn't have it. I didn't discuss with the media. Would have shown us that video um, of Patricia King. Right? I know they don't have it. They may not have it now. Otherwise, you would have watched the video where oil was coming directly from heaven real oil physical oil you would have seen the foot of real angels that you are not pressing into god doesn't mean some other people are not
the divine life. We shout Zoe. We shout Zoe. But there is nothing Zoe about our lives. If they shoot me, I die. Zoe. Right? Every, ep every epidemic is in the society and it embraces me. Zoe. Now, I don't say this in a derogatory way. I'm saying this to challenge us. I guarantee you, if we learn how to receive that Zoe life, you will watch HIVs get healed as if they do not exist. It will no longer even be a prayer point. The more I see people line up for counseling, I don't rejoice to say, wow, it means I'm an anointed man. I look at people line up for counseling and I plead in my heart because I say, shame on us. It means we are doing very small. A sign that we are doing so much is that the people in the church should be so impacted, they should now go out and begin to transform people. But today we say, wow, I had a crowd, hundreds of people, to, to mean that ministry is moving forward. Wrong parameters. Because there is nothing spiritual that we can use to gauge our standard. Who is God speaking to tonight? Where have you reduced God? Let me tell you. One day, maybe I'll come in the night, I'll bring a chair here, one coin on here. We'll just sit down and we'll discuss and i will share with you some of my encounters when god began to work with me some of you if i share it as you are seated now you've seen me every day you've even eaten with me but you will not believe it because you say it's a lie encounters with angels all kinds of spiritual encounters because i believe in him i believe in him i'll never forget the first time i had the audible voice of god let me tell you something if you hear god you must have faith you see that it's not about maybe i'm trying to calculate you must have faith listen at the at the mount of transfiguration when elijah and moses appeared what did peter do peter recognized them immediately had he ever seen them who told him he said what i see three people it's a privilege that means I have questions to ask. Let's prepare three beds. One for Elijah, one for Moses because he thought they came to pass the night with Jesus and discuss a lot of things. When an angel appeared to Mary, Mary was not afraid. Mary was a natural occurrence. It was the salutation she was afraid of, not the angel. Today, if somebody says, I see an angel, say, I beg, Jerry, angel, where you think angels are just like that? Yet the Bible says, are they not ministering spirit? I'm showing you why we have become carnal. We threw away the Holy Spirit. We are gradually kicking the Holy Spirit out in a bid to do what we call word, 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 word. Right? Word, word, word. Just the word. Give me the word and, and don't give me anything else. There are even people who reject Jesus and say, just give me Bible. Give me Bible, Jesus, go. Once it's not Bible, even Jesus should go away. And the devil likes that theology. If it is Bible you want, Zondavan, keep publishing. New versions keep coming out. And we keep carrying the Bible. And we convince ourselves that because we are holding Bible and reading it, we are growing in the world. But we are becoming carnal. That's why death is rampant. It is that carnality. Do you know that our forefathers were more spiritual than us? Is that true? Witchcraft in the village is not a shock. An average young boy in the village has seen some form of witchcraft. So if they tell him somebody can appear and disappear, he will believe it. But in the church, ah, if I disappear here now, now, in this place, finally the article will be complete. The article you have been writing, you will pay New Nigeria tomorrow morning to publish it. Confirm. Hey. Witches on suit. Yet we talk about the mighty army that is rising up. Mighty army. Where is the army? Truly there is an army that is rising up. But let me tell you, our level of transformation is slow. We are hardly becoming like the Christ. There is, there is a standard that has been measured for us. And the greatest of us is just a step out of the cave. We must sustain a technology to hurry up and to catch up. The church... Call spiritual growth prosperity. 
since every other spiritual thing like healing and the rest is very hard we have left it and then remedied it with money so when i come in with a nice suit and i come and say am i is the word not working let me tell you the truth if that's what you think you go to a meeting where you see people popping champagne of hundred thousand which which pastor or which christian can hardly do that in nigeria there are people lavishing resources we have reduced ourselves and match our spirituality so if i come out with a jeep if there are five jeeps that are lined up here you say man god is in koinonia what five jeeps is here oh. in bible days men were called generals on the strength of heavy capacity in the spirit one man will threaten a nation not a politician but elijah not in a radio station he made a declaration to the heavens he vetoed the prayer request of everybody and said me i speak there will not be rain not god revealed to me i stand in my office over this territory and i said there will not be rain and he went to bed it was by sorcery jezebel found out he was the one and she swore to remove his head how many men of god have disgraced themselves on television how many men of god have disgraced their ministries in newspapers how many men of god predicted that 2012 is his rapture huh how many you see how we, we we just showed the whole world that we have been lying for years instead of even keeping it quietly to now be pressing for forgiveness and transformation we now went on air to publicly embarrass ourselves gotta be more gotta be more it's gotta be more than this it's gotta be more gotta be more, it's gotta be more today people talk about the anointing but they do not even know what the anointing is no at all i tell you many people do not even know what the anointing is we have reduced god to prosperity because that's the only physical show of progress right we have left the harder ones like healing and speaking over nations and forcefully bringing people to the cross those ones are very intricate you can't fake those ones so we have thrown them and then we ran to the easy ones we make money and make two and two together and then we now say it's working it's not working no we have to admit this thing and press into god Part of my goals in life is to so align to the Holy Spirit that my life becomes a true expression of the divine life. I was told about one or two cases of some women here in this place who are here right now. Right? I think one of them is a miscarriage issue. I'll minister to her shortly. And then another person. The question is, if that happens in your church, what will you tell them? I know what you will tell them. I know what you will tell them. You don't have faith. If you have faith, you will provoke my oil. There's no problem with my own end. It's you that don't, you are liars. We are back. must be a generation that can present Christ to the world in his fullness. I truly believe I will be part of those people with all my heart. I desire to see the fullness of his glory find expression. I have received the son. And that means I believe that his life is in me. But where is that life? We are only seeing fragments of it fragments of it but there is a revival that is coming this will be a revival of the spirit himself when the spirit of god will start schooling people by ourselves because all the schools of ministry we have done and everything we have ended up making people just like us the spirit of god in these days the lord has started revealing this to me throughout last week i've been under an intense anointing right from when i finished the, the financial series and the holy ghost told me he will personally begin to teach people as many who are interested there will be such a move of the spirit i'm telling you god will begin to tutor people and the more you see him the more you will know preachers are lying the more you encounter him the more, the more you will know that people are sincere but liars the lord is revealing this to me this is how god trained me God taught me so many things. 
secrets in the bible there are times that i will the lord will be visiting me and his presence physical cloud i'm not talking of some spooky vision that people lie about real cloud like a fog will fill the room and i'll lie down there and the pages of my bible will be turning by themselves to certain scriptures i hope you believe it hallelujah we have reduced god we have reduced god is this is too bad to an extent that if somebody on a wheelchair stands up people look and they say kai who knows him look at how you put pressure on men of god people come for miracle service we have to be asking them where are you coming from so that you don't think that they organize things around it's a shame it's a shame It says he that has a son has life has life look at what jesus did an example of what we should become jesus five loaves and two fish he multiplied it everywhere he went he was doing good everywhere we go we are doing bad or at least average and yet we claim to have his spirit there are people who even brag and say i have the spirit of jesus without measure where is it where, where did you keep the spirit of Jesus without measure? There is no sincerity in our pursuit of God. We tell a lot of lies. I was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday. And I was telling them that the reason why many people do not grow is because we lie. I can fake it now and say there's somebody here. You have a stomach ache and somebody will arise. And because I did not minister in truth, my lie will... Do you know that you can lie for a long time until it looks like the truth to you? How many people don't pray they come on stage and run their mouth and speak nonsense i am a prayer warrior but there is a there is a touch of the throne that comes on every man of prayer it follows their teachings it's like a spirit it's like a finishing on your words if you are a man of the altar it truly that fire is not just the shouting there is a communication of life how many people claim they are prayer warriors and they stand and speak and while they are speaking you die spiritually until you start sleeping physically because there is no life that is coming the question god is asking you is why did you stop believing in me many of us did not start like this god is speaking to us many of us when we started we were spiritual we meant business with god eventually as we started getting some results in our lives we have thrown the holy spirit out now we are left with letters convincing ourselves that because we are reading scriptures it means we are growing spiritually do you not see the need in our world today there are people with hiv cancer there are people in need of the zoe life that we claim to have we claim to have zoe i am an ambassador of the kingdom then demonstrate it he said when i came to you i did not come in the excellency or the eloquence of speech because i know the danger that it can do to you but when i came i came in a demonstration i came to prove to you i came to bring the jesus of your bible to be made manifest here and now ah, this is the theme of my life that everywhere i go i become an expression of his reality that no matter how you do not believe in God, when I show up, you can at least see something that convinces you of the reality of the Christ. Right now, demons sit in our congregations while we are gyrating and singing and worshiping. They are joining us in the worship because there is absolutely nothing that can kick them out. When we finish, we say, Kai, it was a wonderful service. Together, let's share the grace. And they join us and share the grace. Demons mock men of God all around. And we give all kinds of explanations for it. Do you not see what is happening to the body of Christ? But the Holy Ghost revealed this to me. That in the seasons that are coming, personally, He's going to start leading men into strange encounters and tutorials. Where in a sleep, you will see a strange man come to you. And begin to tell you, right, I want to teach you the mystery of spiritual power. And when you wake up in the morning, 
like like solomon an intelligence you cannot account for all of a sudden this is how this is how god trained me oh this is how god trained me i remember a time in my life when i would sleep in the night this happened for almost two months and at least one of god's generals will come to me in dreams explaining to me their perspectives i remember many of the people that have browsed and have taken from their lives i remember a man called peter tan the first time i would meet that man was in a vision the first time i ever saw apostle paul he was in a vision i didn't even know he was the one i just saw a man who was short and bald headed after speaking to me then i asked who are you and he didn't respond to me he moved a while and then he turned and said paul the first time i would see the picture on the internet i said this is the man i saw yet we know we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses the name koinonia was a revelation it's not that i just sat down and said kai what should we call it now no no right now everything we do is sensual and carnal the exact blueprint and the things that we're doing in this ministry were a revelation a revelation by god it was the spirit of god that revealed to me the secret of church growth now i'm not saying i'm throwing away materials and all of that it's good i've, I've, I've taught us to build ourselves but I'm saying, Koinonia, hear me. If we throw away the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, let me have somebody here, just one person, anybody. You're a visitor, you're a pastor. Don't worry. You came all the way. Or oh, you served in Jigawa and you're here right now. Your face is new. The Lord will use you greatly. I know you came with a hunger from your heart. I will use you as an example and may that example be your experience. Huh? Hallelujah. Watch this. This is how God designed us to walk. Never separated from the Holy Spirit. If you are looking for women, look for it with him. If he approves it, then he's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are talking about ladies, let it be with his presence. If you are eating let it be with him see let me tell you something the holy spirit is not a person you leave and then when you come for koinonia oh sweet holy spirit i i love you and and all those things we say i i love you you are my all in all you are you are this and that and, and all those kind of things that we bring the holy spirit was sent literally literally to continue the ministry of jesus if you want to know everything the holy spirit should do in your life study jesus in the gospels the holy spirit is all that and more all that and more there was a time i said holy spirit now you have to what am i supposed to expect in your ministry and he told me he said study jesus that's what he told me everything you ever see jesus do to the disciples expect the holy spirit to do to you including revealing himself there was a day he wanted to reveal himself and he said who do men say i am one day the holy ghost will ask you who do men say i am say yeah you are the spirit of this you are the and then he says who do you call me and he said i don't know you and he says now right my name is the spirit of life and to you that becomes a revelation at once you begin to minister life because his words bring impartation when was the last time you heard the voice of God? Not the one you are lying about. The real voice of God. When was the last time the presence of God came into your room in worship? Let me show you where we have thrown him away. When was the last time you locked yourself? When was the last time you even went for retreat? See, some of you are just remembering that there's a word called retreat. Because you've forgotten about it. You know advancement. You don't know retreat. Unfortunately, in the kingdom... You must retreat to advance. That you shut everything and you began to worship until the temple, your temple now, not a building, is filled with his glory. And songs begin to come. Look at what musicians write. Nonsense. They, they write songs that don't bless anybody. 
they just come up with songs the reason why we argue whether songs are scriptural or not is because most of them came from the belly of hungry people who are activating multiple streams of income You are mighty on your throne. 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 You are mighty on your you are mighty on your own. 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 Make up your mind from tonight that you will never minister death to people again. Make up your mind. That if at all you speak, that you will speak as an oracle with power. Make up your mind that if you teach, you teach as one who has touched heaven. Make up your mind that if you sing tonight, you will sing as an oracle of grace. Enough of powerlessness. Enough of ministrations without impact, without transformation. Press for one minute. We'll soon round up, but press. Go ahead. Go ahead and pray. Lord, I need power in my life. I need power in my life. I'm tired of faking it. I want the Zoe life. I have received the Son. Lord, let the life, let the realities in Christ be manifest. Let the realities in Christ be manifest. I'm tired of a powerless ministry. walk conscious from today if you have received the son I want you to know that there is a life in you crying for expression there is a divine life that can heal the sick there is a divine life that can cast out devils there is a divine life that can change hopeless situations there is a divine life that can bring God to the sea. Stop preaching powerless sermons. Stop teaching just theology without grace. 
stop exciting the people of God with no results in their lives. your voice and pray in one minute i am determined to be supernatural in every way in every way no the sons of god are not natural people they are supernatural in every way pray my hands are supernatural my words are supernatural lift your voice and pray My utterances are supernatural. They carry the life-giving power, the sway life. The power to heal, the power to alter the destinies of people, the power to transform their lives. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty in my life. 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 Say, you are mighty in my life. 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 One more time. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that from today dead religion will die out of your life I pray for you that the substance of spiritual reality that which authenticates the manifestation of the Zoe life that which proves here and now that you are not natural that which proves that the earthly, the terrestrial has become celestial and heavenly. I pray in the name of Jesus that may that life begin to manifest through your life. That your hands will become instruments of revival and signs and wonders. That when men need God to show up, they will call on your attention because you will be the clearest representation of the divine life in your territory. I pray for you, may your words carry the power from heaven. May your words no longer be barren and powerless. May your words authenticate the fact that the spirit of life is at work in you. May they bring healing. May the words bring grace. May they bring life. Like the river in Ezekiel 47. That everywhere it flows, let the fish that was dead come back to life. Let the souls that are dead come back to life. I pray that from today, your life and your ministry will no longer just be a ministration of death, wasting the time of God's people. May you step into an unusual dimension. 
I'd like you to receive what I'm releasing upon you. It's a ministration of the Spirit. Many of you will go back to your meetings from today and you will begin to see cripples walk. You will begin to see the demonstration. Not just in talk. Talk, talk, talk with no results. There are many of you that will go back to your homes and the moment you step in there, all of a sudden your territory begins to react because the Zoe life, not just that which is in Christ alone, that which has been manifest right here, right now, right here, right now, right here, right now. You will go back to your territories. Many of you will pass people and you will hear spirits scream out of them. You didn't plan to pray for them, but you took the presence of God. You took the life of heaven. So way the life that controls heaven. So way the life that upholds all things. I'm praying for you that everything that has defied God in your life, in the name that is above all names, may that so way life come upon it right now. May that so way life come upon every sick body here right now. May that life of God let it come upon every dying spiritual life. Every lukewarm spiritual life. The life that makes men doubt whether God is working with you or not. I pray for you. Let it change from tonight. You don't have to tell people you are a man of God. Carry that life. Carry that divine life. May that life halt sickness from your body permanently. This repeated stamina circle of nonsense that comes upon your body discern the Lord's body so that you will be strong discern the Lord's body Father I pray let there be mighty men and women that will arise from this meeting tonight let tonight's meeting produce a spiritual awakening and I stretch my hands and I pray for you Whatever you came here with, in the name that is above all names, that is not consistent with the Zoe life. Whatever it is, that is not consistent with the life of heaven. Right now I declare in the name of Jesus that it leaves your body and your life now. I cause every pain. I cause every situation that is attempting to challenge God in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord put a testimony in your mouth that will verify before men that you are a carrier of his presence. Father, we give you all the praise. Listen. Walk out of this meeting, not just with an excitement, but with a consciousness that you are not only a carrier, but a dispenser. The Bible says the first Adam was made a quickening soul. A quickening soul can only benefit, but cannot dispense. But the second Adam was made a life-giving spirit. A life-giving spirit. Next time someone is sick around you, don't just turn and say bring him to Joshua Selman or bring him to this tell him in the name of Jesus I agree with you you have been doing it as an ordinary Christian that's why it's not working you have just been doing it and say after all I'm a brother do it now as one who is together with the Holy Spirit always realize that it's not about you it's about the paracletos always realize you are going to preach don't just go alone I'm going to go and minister you'll be disappointed Go with him. When you stand on that stage, even if you do not know what to say, realize that there is one, the spirit of life. As you stand to sing and minister, realize that you are not just talking songs or melodies, but you are ministering life. And you will be amazed 
to see people change. Don't be afraid of confronting situations with God. Without God, there are many things that are not possible. Jesus, let's, let's just go with what works. Let's spell Jesus. Hallelujah. We can spell any other thing. Someone coordinate them. No, this is wrong. Please, someone, Sunday school teacher, no, CEM, there's nobody who, who is the older one among the children? Coordinate them. No fighting, no crying. Look, everybody is going to taste of this. You won't see it and... Okay, let's spell Jesus very quickly. If not, these children will rumple this cake. One to go. J E S U S. Congratulations. Let's celebrate our children. Hallelujah. At the end of the service, there is a package for you from the welfare department. So, all the children, as soon as we share the grace, just make your way to the front. Everyone clear the way for them. Today is their day. And then the welfare department. Um, We'll give them a little package. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I sincerely want to honor all those who have come to be part of tonight's miracle service. We have a lot of people um, as we always do, but I think this miracle service is very dear to me because it's more like a homecoming of so many people. We see a lot of uh, koinonia people, those who have gone representing Christ in their ministries, their businesses, and um, we honor God. Pastor Jakes, as I said, is here with his wife. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Um, I saw Pastor Godwin Abdullahi too with his wife doing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And we honor every other person. Please don't be offended. I see Ruben also. He was one time a music director. Eddie. Eddie is there. He's doing a great job in his ministry in Joss. He sent me a text this morning and he said um, he'll be on his way to partake. We're proud of um, these people and what they are doing for the kingdom. We're one big family. And I trust that one day when God gives us grace, we'll do a very big homecoming where everybody who is alive, will come together and will celebrate what God has done. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pray a prayer, just one prayer, and say, Lord, I insist that something must change in my life tonight. Please lift your voice and pray. We have not come to waste our time. In any of the overflows, make sure you are praying. Our online community, follow us strongly as we pray. Hallelujah. Make sure you're praying. I place a demand on your grace, oh God. Place a demand on your grace. I've heard others testify. It's my turn to testify. Please make sure you are praying. This is part of the service. Jesus, we bless you. Shabrakatu baradaba. Are you praying? We're provoking the heavens to respond to us today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Psalm 30 verse 5, just two scriptures, and then I'll give us a charge and we'll trust God to really, really pray. Hallelujah. One of the things that God is going to be doing tonight um, aside from the miracles, the healings, is I really believe with all my heart, and the Lord began to speak this to me um, two weeks ago, that there will be strong impartations. Hallelujah. An impartation is a transference of grace. Your possibilities in the kingdom are defined by the kind and the order of grace that is at work in you. It's not defined just by desire. Hallelujah. Desire alone cannot be sufficient for results and so your possibilities are defined by the kinds of graces that you carry and so i want us to please pay attention um even as i teach hallelujah please someone play thank you 
Psalm 30 verse 5. It says, for his anger endured but for a moment. It says, in his favor is life. Let's read the other part together. I want to read. Weeping may endure for a night. It says, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. It says, weeping may endure. In other words, it is not unusual when we are challenged by situations that rattle our convictions we, we live in a world where um you don't have to look for trouble for it to come hallelujah the moment you are born there are all kinds of vicissitudes that come with our lives from those that are self-inflicted as a result of ignorance um to those that are as a result of um um, the wickedness that exists in our territory. Hallelujah. And so we must sustain a system in the spirit to be able to rise above these limitations. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that weeping, weeping there is symbolic of sorrow, is symbolic of pain, is symbolic of setbacks is symbolic of frustrations and the bible says though weeping may endure for a night hallelujah it says but joy hallelujah joy cometh in the morning in other words this this is a very strong message because the lord is saying the same way there is night and day are we together the same way there is night time and there is morning. Whenever you see that there are situations in your life that cause you to weep. He's saying there is a system in the kingdom that when properly operated is able to bring you to the other side of your pain. Joy. The same way you see night is dark right now and we anticipate the morning in a few hours. Is that true? So I can be in a situation that is hopeless and know that in Christ, all I see is not all there is. The same way there is day and night, there is another side to my pain. Say amen. amen. This is a message of hope. This is a prophetic message. Are we together? The Lord kept laying this in my heart very strongly. Are we together now? That though weeping endures for a night. Let me tell you something. If you have never been through a challenging situation, you may not understand the relevance of this message. Are we together? Look at the lady who was sharing her testimony, you know, with nephritis, the whole kidneys, you know, on their way to being completely damaged. Now, for this kind of person, she's not thinking marriage, she's not thinking children, she's thinking life. Are we together now? Yeah. There are many people like that, seated, scattered all around, trusting God with all kinds of medical death sentences, hoping that God will be able to step in tonight. But I have good news for you. The Bible says, though weeping endures for a night. Then it says, joy comes when? In the morning. Isaiah 60, Isaiah 61. Please, can you play something? Is that all right? Okay. Isaiah 60, 61, sorry. I want you to pay attention to what I'm about to read because this is very, very instructive. We're reading from verse 1 to 3. Are we ready? It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He said, He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Listen, please. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Then it says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord 
and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn in Zion. Let's read verse 3, the first sentence. One to read. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Stop. It says, do weeping endures for a night. There is a system that whenever morning shows up, with that morning there is joy. But he never told you how that morning comes. But now the prophet is giving us a revelation that there are human vessels anointed to call your night morning. He says to appoint. The word appoint means to decree it so. Since we have established that joy will always come with the morning, it means there's got to be a system that can call a man's night to become morning so that with that morning his joy comes and he says the spirit of the lord is upon me and has authorized me to call to appoint unto them that morning zion he says to give them he says it as though you are a possessor of it to give them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning then he says the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness are we together he says that they may be called oaks or trees of righteousness that he might be glorified and then he says my people shall never be ashamed my people when it comes to turning their darkness to light, they shall never be ashamed. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And part of the many things that He comes to do is to grant capacity to appoint unto men. Benga was sharing at the welcome note and he said in Second Chronicles 20:20, 20, 20, he says, Believe in the Lord your God. He says, So shall you be established. He says, believe in his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. It's not human worship. It's a system in the kingdom. Are we together now? There is a system in the kingdom that brings men into their glorious destinies. We've explored the mysteries of the kingdom again and again. We just finished a series on the secrets of the kingdom. And please, especially for those who are just coming, I encourage you to get those series and listen to them with all your heart because the operation of the kingdom is systemic and when you understand the systems of the kingdom then your victory is guaranteed it's not if it will happen it's when it will happen hallelujah praise the lord and part of the things i believe god is going to be doing tonight is to appoint unto men seasons let me tell you something with prophecy you see the realm of the spirit does not have time listen please the realm of the spirit does not operate with time are we together events only unfold according to the will of god not just according to the passage of time so the regulator of the activities in the realm of the spirit is the will of god not your clock but when it comes to the earth realm our activities are governed by time whether or not you want time is passing are we together now let me tell you something about prophecy prophecy has the ability listen please it has the ability to tap into the realm of the spirit and find out what would have been your prophetic destiny that has been altered in time are we together and by that grace of prophecy you can take it because there is no past and future in the spirit and so the devil may have messed up your five years but the prophetic is able to pick that five years and make it your tomorrow because there is no time listen listen prophecy does not just reveal it creates it makes possible what would never have been possible so the prophet looks at a woman and says by this time tomorrow he was not revealing what would have happened anyway the prophetic word created it hallelujah this is the thing about God that truly makes me convinced that all things are possible. All things are possible because whatever leaves you in the physical did not live in the spirit. And there is still a system 
that can bring it to become your current day experience so a woman who should have given birth to five children and for whatever reason has been delayed prophecy is able to shift that miracle and make her have triplets and twins are we together now yes do you believe what i'm saying listen if you don't believe this then we're wasting our time because we're talking about the god of all possibilities i will die believing him he is faithful hallelujah let's look at just one more scripture john chapter 10 verse 10 jesus was teaching and he said this he says the thief cometh not king james the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy are we together but then he says i am come I am come it's a manifesto like you say vote me I want to do something for you and then he says look the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy he says but I am come that ye may have life and to have that life more abundantly other versions say to the fullest the Bible identifies Satan as a thief are we together and what is the character of a thief let me tell you a thief studies an environment and takes advantage of the vulnerability of the people second Corinthians, second Chron um, corinthians chapter 2 uh, i believe give us second corinthians chapter 2 holy spirit help me verse 11 there's a scripture that just came to my mind as i was talking Two. thank you lest satan should do what take advantage are you seeing that lest satan should do what take advantage of us it says for we are not ignorant of his methodology there is a system with which satan destroys people the first system is to study your vulnerability so he waited until jesus was hungry and he came through that angle of hunger are we together one of the many blessings of growing in the world is that you close every access point for Satan to be able to take advantage in your life. The area of the kingdom you are not furnished and established in will become the access point of darkness in your life. Are we together? He said, lest Satan should take advantage of us. We are Christians. But because of our inaccurate understanding of the systems of God, Satan can leverage on our ignorance satan can leverage on certain spiritual possibilities and buffet our lives write it down i've taught it again and again but i want to repeat it very quickly there are only three ways satan has access to people especially believers only three ways number one covenants covenants this is the system of transgenerational allegiance whether towards God or towards Satan. A covenant creates a platform for access. Regardless of the individual openness of the people. A territory can have a covenant with God to find expression at all times. When David was dedicating the temple, he stood up and said, Oh Lord, whoever faces this temple in Jerusalem and prays unto you, we pray is a covenant that you hearken to them. So when Daniel was about to be destroyed, when they signed a law the bible says he opened his window towards jerusalem remembering the covenant are we together and the bible says he prayed covenants they are fraternities that we come into whether with god or with demon spirits that authorize certain levels of activities in lives in families and in territories please pay attention I'm building a conviction in us so that we'll pray. A covenant is so powerful because in a covenant, your, your individual refusal or acceptance does not necessarily change things ordinarily. Are we together? I give you an instance. They did not consult with you to change fuel price because there is a covenant. By birth, you are a Nigerian. Are we together so whatever happens to this country as an individual you can exempt yourself but as a territory we are under a common challenge are we together 
When Jesus saw somebody who was born blind, his disciples asked a question. He said, who sinned that this man was born blind? He said, him or his father. In other words, there was something in the teaching of Jesus to them that had taught them that there can be things that transcend a generation. Are we together? And transcend a territory. Now, there are several people in a bid to bring balance to the exaggerated um, activities of demon spirits. We have deceived people into believing that covenants do not have anything. And so we have people jumping and saying, no way. But there are 11 people in a family. None of them is giving birth. Yet, they, are, they do not want to admit that there is something wrong. Covenants are powerful covenants are respected in the realm of the spirit there is a law that without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins so the word had to become a lamb and go through that condition for mankind to be saved there are families born again but they do not understand the systems of God your personal salvation does not affect your territory. It takes an operation of the kingdom for that reality to be established. It is not negating what Christ has done. The confusion here usually has come from an accurate or an inaccurate understanding of the prophetic speakings of God and the experiential manifestation. Follow me please. When God speaks, he speaks from the realm of his possibilities and he's prophetic in his communications. He called things that be not as though they are. Are we together? But when it comes to the experiential manifestation of the same, there is a partnership from this earth realm to make it real. In the eyes of God, no one should go to hell. Is that true? Because the price has been paid. Are there still people dying and going to hell today? Yes. Does that mean the work of salvation is... is, is, is um, is a failure no the people have not opened up their will there are many of us today by the grace of god who will be healed but scripture was not just written this night it's been written before our forefathers were born however tonight there is a principle we are going to engage in that will make it become real are we together now yeah listen sickness should give us an understanding that covenants are real if you are a Christian and you are tongue talking and you can still fall sick, that means you are a Christian and you can still be buffeted by demons. There is a spiritual logic to this. It is not insulting your salvation. It is to help you understand that there is, there is, there is an understanding that will give you freedom. Please, I want you to pay attention to this. Many individuals, especially those who love God, are victims of fraternities the goal of covenants is to create transgenerational allegiance whether to God or to the devil the missionaries came and brought the gospel of salvation but they did not bring the gospel of the kingdom so malaria killed them you call it malaria we know what killed them are we together because there are systems in the kingdom so you can be born again your eternal salvation can be secured but then because we do not understand the operations of the word we can just pretend and say everything is all right faith is not foolishness the end of faith is a manifestation if you are trying trying and nothing is happening i think it's it's very it's very humble to open up yourself and say look i see patterns the clearest proof of an existence of covenants is patterns similarity of happenings regardless of the individuals they rob your brother in a quiet bomb your sister is minding herself in benway they rob her too two of them were not discussing it because you see covenants give access to certain operations of of spiritual beings whether god or satan i can enter a covenant of righteousness with my family that can grant god access even someone who is an unbeliever can come under the corporate covering of that covenant that's what brought people out of egypt so long as there was blood whether the individuals believed or not for as long as their door a representative of the people had blood the angel of death passed covenants i have seen this i saw it in my own life i saw it in my own family I've seen this in the life of pastors. I've seen this in the life of sincere people.
number two ignorance the second access point is a lest satan should take an advantage of us on the strength of our ignorance in this area ignorance ignorance incomplete understanding of the principles of the word or no understanding completely both of them in the spirit is called ignorance whether you know the principle or you know part of it is still ignorance because you are only having um, the Bible says you will arise and you will shine Isaiah 60 verse 1 not because you are tired of sitting but it says your light is come it's always been there but the day it comes to you it has the power to cause you to arise and shine ignorance that's why we spent three weeks expounding on the mysteries of the kingdom to help us understand the systems of God. Listen, the journey of a believer starts with Christ. It does not start with principles. It starts with an encounter of the person Christ. When you begin to study principles outside of an, the encounter of Christ, you will get into Scientology and witchcraft and mysticism and spiritism. You must encounter the object of your encounter is the person Jesus. Are we together from that standpoint of encounter he reveals himself to you he brings you to a point of intimacy and your reward for intimacy is power and that power is divided into two one power that comes from the understanding of the systems of god and another dimension of power that comes as a reward for intimacy so there are two dimensions of the operations of God's power. Number one is the dimension of his power that is programmed into his laws. By believing those laws, the power is released. Whether you are praying or not. Seed time and harvest is an example of such laws. You engage it and the power of God is released. Are we together? Yeah. But there are certain dimensions of power that will only be released on the strength of intimacy so it is from that standpoint of encounter you begin to explore the systems of god the systems of god defines his way of operation and the moment you comprehend that then you will truly access power ignorance you can be born again and be ignorant number three disobedience the last access point of satan is disobedient willful refusal to comply with God's principles willful refusal that's disobedience you're not doing it out of ignorance the Bible says having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete not when you start when it's complete Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 says and it shall come to pass right that if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day it says that you shall be exalted above all nations and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you then he begins to list them it shall come to pass if thou will diligently Joshua verse 1 uh, chapter 1 verse 8 right the Lord was speaking to Joshua and then he says this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth he says but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all all not some observe to do right then he says then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have good success it's very important obedience 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 is not just hearing what god has said obedience is doing what god has said in john chapter 2 when the servants came to mary she said whatsoever he tells you to do he said do it hallelujah paul the apostle was encouraging the the early church and he said now that ye know these things in fact it wasn't just paul i think it was jesus himself he says, now that you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Now that you know, happy are ye if you do them. These, brothers and sisters, as mysterious as Satan looks, this is the only way he can find expression. His 
possibilities are finite they are not infinite number one is covenants the strongest access point to satan or to, or of satan into people's lives and then number two we have ignorance and number three disobedience and that's why we are gathered here tonight that god will grant us grace to take advantage of the provisions that have come in christ and end this this buffeting of darkness over our lives and destinies and i pray that it will be someone's testimony tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for you from the depth of my heart that as god begins to touch people he will touch you and end this captivity in your life once and for all is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am listen i want you tonight to believe god do not come to God carelessly. Listen, the Bible describes the kind of attitude we must have when we come to God. Hebrews 11 verse 6, it says, For without faith it is impossible to please Him. He said, For he that cometh unto God must come believing, must believe that He is. That means He exists. And then that He is the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So every time you approach God, you don't come to try. Let me find out whether God can touch this cancer. Let me find out whether God can end my captivity. No. You come to him believing. Say, I'm a believer. So tonight, I want you to approach the mighty God, knowing that he's able to do all things. Believe me. You have your requests. You have your needs. Take your eyes away from that infirmity and believe in God. It does not look it can be within the twinkling of an eye and God will change your story it doesn't take him time God is not a carpenter he doesn't build by nailing things he builds by speaking are we together now he called darkness light and it became light I really believe God and I came here tonight trusting that God will touch us it's going to be a very quick walk that's why I'm taking out the time to speak to us. Very quickly, let me just take the altar call now. Look up, please. Let that be the first miracle tonight. Let's take the altar call so that as we begin to move and just flow, we'll just move in one single sweep. There's a lot to do tonight and we want to save time so that we can finish on time. I told you that there are three access points of Satan. One covenants two ignorance three disobedience are we together john chapter 3 from verse 16 says for god so loved the world he said that he gave his one and only begotten son who is no longer his one and only but the first begotten of we because he has called many of us into glory are we together then it says that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life the thing i love about the faith life is that you are never forced to do anything your response in the kingdom is always a product of revelation and your willingness if you are willing and obedient then you will eat the good of the land there are people seated here right from praise and worship there are so many listening to me the first overflow and all the overflows around there are so many connecting uh, you know on our social media platforms and you're hearing my voice right now and the holy spirit is telling you the man of god is talking to you the first miracle that can happen to you tonight is the miracle of ending the mismanagement of your life by trying to run it your own way are we together that you hand over your life when you come to jesus 
you don't just come and accept him in your heart you take your heart and say lord i give you everything not i give you my spiritual life i hand over my entire life to you everything i've been through use it for your glory lord i offer my life to you everything that's true repentance that as you come here you are not just coming because you are feeling guilty you are coming here sincerely saying i'm tired of mismanaging my life there's got to be more than this there's got to be more than living my life the way i want i must come under authority and i know there are so many people inside and outside hearing my voice some of you have never made this decision to make jesus lord of your life you've made a decision to go to church you've made a decision to join a religion called christianity but you have not made a true decision to surrender everything and there are people there's another category i'll call all by uh, at, at once so that we'll save time there are those who at one point you truly made a genuine decision but the cares of this life the challenges in your life just overwhelmed you and right now you know that as it is right now as it is right now you cannot say things are all right between you and god you've backslidden you've you've turned away but the bible says if my people who are called by my name it says shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then it says then we lie here from heaven and will forgive their sin and then we'll heal their land forgiveness will always follow healing are we together i'm going to make an altar call right now any of the overflows outside inside here very fast i'll count one to ten listen there are people the holy ghost is speaking to and you know that you need to make your ways right with Jesus. You're saying, Lord, things are happening in my family. I do not even know the name of what is going in my family. The first key is to surrender your all. To sacrifice everything before his throne. And say, Lord, I'm not just coming to receive healing. I'm coming to start a new life. It's called Zoe, God's very life. Not another kind, the very life of God hallelujah praise the lord before i make the altar call i want us to all close our eyes and pray in one minute intercede for those who are about to come and say lord no power will stop them from coming no power will stop them from coming we believe in the salvation of souls this is not a cinema where we are watching football this is a place where god is changing lives and destinies pray as you are praying for many of you, the Lord is going to be speaking to you right now. There are so many outside in all the overflows. It's like you've been waiting for a man to call you and say, return home. He's calling you. He's calling you. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to count one to ten. Wherever you are, please, I'd like us to begin to celebrate them outside inside don't wait for others you are returning to christ and you are making this decision for the first time leave your seat and make your way quickly one we'll count one to ten don't wait for anybody god bless you they are coming two please clear the way for them outside don't let no friends stop you jesus is calling you No, no, no. You are, doing, you are doing a very noble thing. Don't let any friend, please encourage them outside. If you came with anyone, don't stop them from coming out. God will punish you if you stop anybody from coming out because he's your friend. It's, it's, it's an entirely, um, it's a personal affair. God bless you. Keep coming. Koinonia, a sacrifice of your applause to motivate them and encourage them. Jesus
son of God. I believe in you. I believe in you. Keep coming. Jesus, son of God. I believe in you. I believe in you. Hallelujah. The Lord is still speaking to me that there are people you need to make your ways right with God. In fact, the Lord is showing me at least three ladies. You've not prayed like for the last two months because you are asking what I have done. Will the Lord really, really open up himself to me? And the Lord is saying you should make your way to the front. Clear the way for them, please. Clear the way. I don't care whether you are a pastor, you are a prophet. Make your way to the front. This is serious business. I believe there are still people outside in the overflows, the first, the second overflow and across the road. Please make your way to the front. We are going to wait for you. One more minute, we are going to wait for you. We are going to wait for you. Please don't play games with God tonight. This is your destiny. He wants to bless you. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, thoughts of peace, thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. I believe in you. I believe in you. Let's all sing this song one more time and then we'll pray for them. Jesus, Son of God, I believe Hallelujah. I sincerely want to appreciate us, young and old. We are all here to receive Jesus Christ. Look at me, please. If I, if I give you a new phone, you don't accept it as though you are embarrassed. You accept it with gratitude. Salvation is greater than any other thing you will be receiving tonight. Are we together? And so I want you to be very proud of what you are doing. Whether you are being restored or you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time. Just make sure you are not reciting a poem. Make sure this is from the depth of your heart. Are we together? Lift your right hand high to the heavens and say this after me. I'm just guiding you. But the most important thing is the sincerity of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I believe that Jesus is the son of God I believe that he died for me I believe that he rose again for my justification tonight I make Jesus my Savior my Lord I hand over my life and my destiny to your care and I ask that you be my Lord, my God, my King forever. From today, the hold of sin, the hold of the flesh over my life comes to an end. This is a new beginning in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted as I pray for you. Father, you see these hands lifted. They have made genuine sincere commitments i pray that the spirit of god that is our seal of redemption will be a witness to this spiritual transaction and i pray in the name of jesus that from tonight let there be a new beginning in the name of jesus christ let there be a new beginning for every one of us no going back to the world no going back to the flesh by the power that raised christ from the dead in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. A big congratulations to all of you. This is the best decision you would have made in your entire life. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like you to follow. Okay, this way, we're going to follow um, the ushers as they lead you. There'll be a group of people to have your names, your details, and we'll follow you up. They'll be very brief so that you come back and join us. Um, please be very fast with them because we're about to get up to the ministrations right away. God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. Let's honor them. Koinonia, bless them. Bless them.
Let's honor them as they go. Please rise up on your feet. We are going to pray for a few minutes. Hallelujah. We're about to pray for a few minutes and I want our hearts to be open. Let's participate in the prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, when we pray, hear me, when we pray, we authorize heaven to step into our lives. Are we together? This is a miracle service and I want us to pray. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, please media help us. We're about to pray. We're about to pray. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. It says, call unto me and I will answer. Call unto me and I will answer. It says, and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call unto me. You see, prayer is a sign of humility because it's an indication that there is so much I do not know and there is so much I cannot do. Are we together? Prayer is a sign of humility. When you call on God to step into your life, it is because you acknowledge that he is able. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I know you are able. Lift your voice. Come on, pray, pray, pray. We are praying, please. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, I believe you are able. That's why I'm here tonight. I believe you are able to heal that cancer, to heal that HIV. Lord, I believe that you are able to give me a new story. I acknowledge you, I recognize you as the mighty God. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He is the mighty God. You are the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. The great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I declare that every force tying down my life tying down my destiny tying down my progress you come under arrest tonight lift your voice and begin to pray oh come on koinoni are you praying every force Oh, you come under arrest tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I set before you this day blessing and cursing, life and death. 
but it says i advise you choose life so that you and your family will live i like you to say in the name of jesus i make a decision tonight i make a choice tonight that i must leave this place free i like you to open your mouth and mention the challenges that brought you here and say i am determined i make a decision i make a decision I make a decision. I make a decision. I make a decision. Are you praying? Shabara Katalaba. Mambra Katalakata. I make a decision. I make a decision. Please pray. Make sure you are praying. I make a decision. I must walk out of here healed tonight. I must walk out of here changed tonight. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. Every covenant orchestrated by darkness to keep me limited in life, to keep my family limited in life. Tonight, I declare that this is my night of victory. Lift your voice and cry, cry, cry. Cry unto the God of your salvation. They must be broken. They must be broken. I contend. I contend by faith. I contend. I contend by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and God had blessed him in all things. I'd like you to pray and say, Every area that is not working, say it every area in my life that is not producing results. Tonight, you come under the influence of the anointing. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Your finances may not be working. Your spiritual life may be working. You are praying your, to a new dimension of God. We declare your majesty, your majesty, your majesty, your majesty. Your majesty. Your majesty. Your majesty. Your majesty. Your majesty. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to the instruction the Lord is giving me. Please listen. Let's walk together, guys. Please, let's walk together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to shout three times. Listen. Hallelujah. Because what I see in the realm of the spirit is like I'm standing on top of this building and I'm seeing like a pot boiling, but it's about to tilt. That's what I'm saying. And the Lord is telling me that at the third shout, we are going to shout once, shout two. By the third shout, listen, the first thing that will happen, by the time we take that third shout, there will be such an explosion of the power of God, a mighty deliverance anointing. And that's how we are going to start off tonight. Are we together? It's called the healer. It's a mystery. It's a mystery that crumbles walls. When they went round the walls of Jericho, they shouted. The instrumentalists, everybody together. Hallelujah. Just be stupid enough to obey this instruction. And watch the God of wonders do mighty things in your life. You are shouting pain away. You are shouting sickness away. You are shouting captivity away. Hallelujah. My goodness, I'm telling you, the power of God is so strong in this place. Mighty, 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 mighty. I'm going to count three. When I count three, listen, I want you to shout from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. And then the second time we are going to shout, listen, as surely as the God of heaven lives, by the third shout, in the name of the Lord God whose I am and who has sent me, the wonders that will happen in your life by this third shout, is a mystery, brothers and sisters, how God operates. Are you ready? Shaba lakarato sobre One, two, three. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, all those under the anointing, just bring them out. But really, it's from the third time. Are you ready for number two? We're shouting powers out of men's destinies. We're shouting thrones, dominions that have tied down the lives of men. Are you ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah. Now be sensitive. Oh, I feel it on me. Here it comes. That grace. That unction. That grace. That unction. By the third child, hear me. Angels will begin to move in dramatic ways. There will be an eruption of the power of God inside and outside. Are you ready? I make a decree. In the realm of the spirit and i pray according to the word of the lord as we make this shout i command thrones i command dominions i command altars and everything tying the destinies of men to give way in the name of the lord jesus are you ready now one ay, 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 ay. two three Go ahead. Go ahead. Bring 
them out. Shake up Mighty things happening to men already. I tell you, it's like volcano. That's what I see in the spirit. Falling on people. Falling on people. You baby. of the prophetic the mantle of the prophetic 21 people that's what I see 21 people right now oh God in the name of Jesus wherever they are at the count of three let that mantle fall on them 21 one two three take it take it take it new wine take it Prophetic mantle. Prophetic mantle. Prophetic mantle. I call it forth. I call it forth. I call it forth. Mantles. Twenty one people. Stepping into prophetic anointings by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I activate it. I activate it. I activate it. I stand on that is apostolic anointing. I activate it. the spirit the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit so many people having their hands tied with chains that's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit chains this is a spirit of limitation lift your hands everyone I want to take authority over this spirit wherever you are inside and outside I like you to get ready if you are in this category something will happen to you let the sword of the spirit part those chains open. Are you ready? I command the chains be broken now. 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 There's a family God is liberating. A whole family. They are here. I'm seeing God touch them. Right now. Giving them miracles. Hallelujah. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, speak to me. Speak to me. Send a word that will bring me hope. Send a word. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. I'm hearing the name Memuna. We have to rush. I'm hearing the name Memuna. Is there someone with that name here? Memuna. That's what I'm hearing. Shabakoto Paratoya. Memuna. Outside. Who is that? Memuna, you are outside. Who is that? Come. Look at me. Where are you coming from? Huh? I'm looking at you. Listen, look at me. You just came from somewhere here. Huh? Is there a, a mic? I'm looking at you. And I'm seeing you enter transport. And you are coming from Abuja to come here. Where did you come from? From Abuja. From Abuja. That's where you are coming. Because I look in the realm of the spirit. And I'm seeing you in a car. And you came. And I'm seeing you praying. And asking God to visit you. And visit your family. Is that why you are here? Yes. Your family. You were saying if only you come here. God will visit your family. And God is saying he's bringing a breakthrough to Memuna. And her family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I break that curse over your family. By the power of the Holy Ghost, it lives forever. Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. Look at me. Please call the lady again. My dear, where is your mother? Huh? What's she doing? Huh? She's a civil servant. She's a civil servant. We have to pray because the devil wants to put sickness she's complaining of pains in her body she went to the hospital ah uh, she may not have told you she went to the hospital last week and they said she should be careful because she's having problems with her back yes. is that true yes. that's what the doctor said that she's having problem with her back yes. this is witchcraft it's not just pain like that your mother cannot even watch for 10 minutes her yes. back will start paining her yes. in the name of jesus christ we pray for mama right now wherever she is let there be a supernatural miracle for her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Madam, can I talk to you please? Yes, that madam. That one with... Um, yes, please. Make sure you are praying. God is touching people. We just want to be fast. I wish we had time. No, 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 you don't have to kneel down. Please stand up. Where are you coming from, madam? From Jigawa. Jigawa State. Jigawa State. Yes. I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing a woman who has gone through pain and she's crying. And I'm wondering why are you going through all of this? Uh, some of them, I may not be able to say it here, but you were invited here. I'm with my sister. That's what I'm saying. Where is she? I'm seeing two people. Where is the sister? Come. Come and stand. Hold on. I'm hearing the Lord speak to me and saying there are two other people. Yes. There are two other people again yes. that you came with aside from you. Where are they? Yeah, yeah. Where are they? Two other people. Where are they? Please come and stand. I want to announce to you, all of you, that God will give you a testimony tonight that will surprise you. Please, I want you to believe. I want you to believe me. The things I see, I may not be able to tell you right now. Because um, one of you has a problem with your husband. I don't want to go into... Hold on. I, should I talk? Do you want me to talk? Calm down. Let me talk to you. You cannot let me talk. Madam, please look at me. Your husband needs deliverance. You believe what I'm saying? You love God. You are a sincere woman. But your husband needs deliverance. Huh? Where is he? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a woman crying. A man coming to vomit. Huh? Like I might vomit from drunkenness. And then this thing is telling on you. Huh? Are you a Christian? You love the Lord. I'm seeing you praying for this woman. Yes. Huh? Yes. 
That's why I asked her, how do I know you are wearing something? I'm seeing you praying for her. Yes, In fact, sir. even when you stood there, you are saying that God should locate this woman yes, and sir. bless her. Yes, I'm hearing sir. your prayers. The Lord is ministering it to me and he's saying you should bless her. And the Lord God of heaven is saying he's going to bless her and bless you too. Hold on. Let me talk to you. Will you believe what I tell you? Why am I seeing you in a wedding gown? Are you married? Yes, sir. I'm seeing you in a wedding gown. Listen to me very carefully. And I'm seeing two men standing. Hold on. I'm seeing one man and I'm seeing another man. Yes, and the man is saying he married before this one. Yes. He comes to you in a dream. Yes, is that true? Yes, sir. This man I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Tell me the truth. Now don't be embarrassed. Yes, this has affected your marriage. Stand up. It's time to deliver you. Because I'm seeing you get married and I'm seeing two men. Your real husband and another one in the realm of the spirit. He comes to you in a dream. But the Lord is saying I should set you free. Elohim, you reign. You reign. You reign. Elohim, you reign. The Lord is showing me a lady. You left the hospital this morning. Your mother is in the hospital. It's part of the reasons why you came here. Please, who is that? Your mother, you left her in the hospital and you came here. Please, when you get that person, let me pray for her because God wants to do a miracle. I want to pray for you. The Bible says what God has joined, let no man put asunder. God did not join you and any spirit entity and he's going to deliver you in the name of jesus be free let her go now in the name of the lord jesus christ i speak to you by the power of the holy spirit madam please look at me your husband needs deliverance his own money finishes on friend and friends and beer is that true is that true, it's true. because i'm seeing him not only drink but buying for his friends and they finish the entire money you are a very kind woman but the truth is he's not giving you even one naira you don't even get money from him but the lord is going to be changing things now let me tell you how it will change it will look as if it's getting worse but you watch and see what god is going to be doing you believe that yes i'm going to pray for you father in the name of jesus christ let there be a miracle a supernatural miracle a supernatural miracle a supernatural miracle there is a woman from Katsina there is a woman from Katsina a woman from Katsina that's what I'm seeing a woman you are outside you didn't cover your hair you are from Katsina where is that person is there someone like that please where is that person why are you clapping where's the person please come from Katsina Look at me. Stand up. Stand up, madam. Stand up. Your time of breakthrough has come. Look at me. The Lord is saying I should quote a scripture for you. When the Lord again shall turn your captivity, he says you'll be like them that day. Madam, you have cried enough in this miracle service. The God of heaven is about to wipe your tears. Mary. Mary. Who is Mary? Mary. Mary. I know there are many Marys. Hold on, please hold on let me call the mary the mary is in this row mary you are seated here no 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 at the back you are wearing a dark cloth right here you didn't cover your head the mary is in not like i don't know if it's a dark cloth like it has flower it's a gown it's a gown straight down gown not gown with skirt is there someone like that mary this row the angel of the lord is there. Is it a gown or someone i'm seeing something with flower is there someone like that please find out mary i need to talk to that person i need to talk to that person you're the one okay well come i'll talk to you madam where are you from i'm from akwaibo you are from akwaibo i stayed in Tanzania. i know 
Are you married? Yes. Where is your husband? I have to pray for you. God wants to give you victory. My goodness, lift your hands. I'm telling you, I just saw like a wind and the Lord said they are angels. Watch what happens in the congregation right now. Angels, 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 angels bringing impartation to people. I just saw like a wind in the spirit. Angels cutting away things. That's what I'm seeing. Angels cutting away things from people. They are removing things in people's bodies. That's what I see. Like in a slimy substance. Living people. This is breakthrough. Breakthrough. God is giving people breakthrough. Hallelujah. Ma, let me pray for you. What do you do, Ma? Hallelujah. Hold on. I'm looking at this woman. Don't be afraid. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm looking at you. Where is Kasham? I'm looking at you, Ma. And I'm seeing her name on your head and i was wondering and the lord no 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 no. hold on come come i'm looking at this woman and, and i'm seeing the name of this lady kasham on her head and i thought your name is kasham but the lord told me it's not kasham the, what she's practicing is what you are now what what are you doing i'm a nurse what are you doing i'm a nurse you're a nurse that's what i'm seeing in the spirit that's what god is telling me because i'm looking at you and i saw her name written on your head and the Lord said I should call her and make see this is not diabolic Hosea chapter 12 it says I have spoken to you by the prophet I have multiplied visions he said I have spoken to you in similitudes this is not jamboree we have a lot of things to do God is locating people and when he's doing it for one he's doing it for many people time will not allow for everybody to be called but I just want you to believe believe in what God is doing in the name of Jesus Christ that's that's the that's the only reason why you are here ma i want to pray for you because i'm seeing the lord promoting you and lifting you you believe that if god grants grace you will return and testify hold my hands ma in the name of jesus christ may the god of heaven promote you and lift you right now in the name of jesus ma i want to pray for you where are you from please i'm from anambra but I'm from Jigawa. I want to pray for you. What do you do? Nurse. I'm a nurse. You are a nurse too. Yes. I want to pray for you. The devil wants to put sickness in your body. And this is not a nice, this is not something I will even say. The devil wants to put it in your body, but will take authority over it right now. Please hold my hands, man. In the name of Jesus, Lord, he will fortify her. I command that spirit to leave you right now. Out! The devil wants to put sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ma, look at me. The pain is living and you are going free. You have cried. I have, I'm seeing a woman who has cried. But God is stepping in. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus. Lord, the grace that makes things happen. May that grace bring this woman out of pain. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. Come, stand here. I want to pray. There's bad luck in your family. Huh? Serious bad luck. Where's your father? Quara State. Quara State. I'm seeing a man in Quara State just going around in circles, not even doing anything meaningful. We have to pray. It's one thing to move physically, but it's another thing for your life to move too. Huh? And I'm going to pray for you. You love Jesus. Please be very serious with the Lord. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Emeka. Emeka. I'm hearing the name of someone. Emeka. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let there be a miracle for you. Let there be a miracle for you. In the name of Jesus. Emeka. The Lord is ministering to me. I'm hearing the name of someone. Emeka. The Lord is giving you a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Emeka, you are outside. I'm seeing two Emeka coming. i tell you, I see like a screen. One, you have beard. One, you are wearing white. Elohim, you reign. You reign. You reign.
I'm seeing the spirit of death on you. Don't be, I'm not a prophet of doom, but I'm seeing the spirit of death on you. The devil wants to destroy your life. We have to pray for you. Sir, look at me. What do you do? You are a student. I'm going to pray for you. You love Jesus and the hand of God is upon your life. Huh? It's not just an ambition for business, but the anointing of God is in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sir, I need to pray for you. I need to pray for you and destroy something that wants to kill you. Huh? So it's just a simple prayer. I'll pray for you. Don't be afraid. I'm not, I'm, we're not prophesying doom. You get what I'm saying? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that thing to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ, that devil of darkness, it leaves you right now. Sir, hold my hands. I pray that the anointing of the Spirit will come upon your life right now. Step into a new level of grace by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not by power, it's not by might. I bring an anointing to your life that takes you to a new dimension. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a lady who is going to shout under the anointing. Just carry her like that and bring her to me. There is a word. No, it's inside here. It's not outside. Right here. Carry her like that and bring her. It's a message. Just carry her like that and bring her. This is what I see in the realm of the spirit. As she's lying down like this, that's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. And I'm hearing Ezekiel 2, verse 2. It says, And the spirit entered me and set me upon my feet. The Lord is bringing not just deliverance to you and your family, but the Lord is bringing, I'm hearing the word restoration. And the Lord is saying, I should prophesy to you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. It comes upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please bring this lady for me. Just, just carry her carefully if she can. Please lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, visit me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I break every hold you have with her life. In the name of Jesus, I'm looking at a lady in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing a spirit wearing a crown and the Lord is saying he's removing that crown. That's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. This is a lady who loves God, but I see her connected to things that have to do with marine powers and I'm seeing the lady with a crown and the Lord is taking it in the name of Jesus Christ. I command freedom right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I command freedom right now. Be free. Go! Let her go now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I want to pray. Before we pray for the sick, there's something the Lord is showing me. Please, I'd like you to lift your hands. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Lift your hands. The power of God is going to come on certain people. I'm seeing deliverance in families. This is not just you. You are standing for your loved ones. I'm seeing mighty deliverance is happening in families. And the Lord is saying, one more time, we should shout that name, Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. As we shout Jesus, I'd like you to shout all your heart. At the count of three. The moment you do that, I see deliverance coming to families. And what they could not do in many years will be done within one month. What they could not do in many years will be done within one month. In the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Right now. Deliverance. 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 Shakataba. Families. I command it. Inside and outside. Inside and outside. Deliverance. What could not be done in 10 years. In 10 years. It will be done in one month. What could not be done in 10 years will be done in one month. What could not be done in 10 years will be done in one month. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it in the name of Jesus. 
every door stopping me from entering the next level right now i command that door broken lift your voice and begin to pray pray yourself to the next dimension doors are opening pray inside and outside doors are opening Doors are opening. Doors are opening. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Many of you may not understand what is happening in the realm of the spirit, but you see, the presence of God is where change happens in the life of men. Just like this, you will walk out and you will see things happen in your life. Just like this. There are chains that tie men. There are chains that hold down destinies. There are chains. Please bring this lady for me. Yes, this lady. Just this very lady, just bring her. I keep the chains falling. Hey, I keep the chains, I keep the chains. I keep the chains, I keep the chains. I keep the chains, I keep the chains. There is power in the name of Jesus. Deliverance is coming for you. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in, in the name of Jesus. Hey, to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Jimmy, the Lord is giving me a word. I saw an eagle flying and the eagle came and entered you. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, he's restoring to you the spirit of prophecy. That's what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. He's restoring to you. I saw an eagle fly and it entered you. And the Lord is saying, he's restoring the spirit of prophecy. 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 Hallelujah. I'm looking in the spirit and I'm seeing people carry load and God is saying I should bring down that load. Lift your hands. Lord, where are they carrying loads that do not belong to them? Right now, at the count of three, let that load come off you. Right now, one, two, three. Right now, right now, right now. Anyone carrying any load, kapra takata, shakata tata. Every load, every load, every load, every load, every load, every load that is not of God. Every load that is not of God. Every load that is not of God must leave you must leave you must leave you must leave you hallelujah hallelujah before we are going to be very fast hallelujah I was walking and the Lord said I should go back praise the Lord please don't mind me just allow me to do what the Lord is saying and the Lord is saying I should walk right here outside right and go outside please hear me and the lord is saying as i walk for every road that i pass if there is a spirit holding your destiny it must leave you please believe me 
I lift my hands right now. Right now, as I'm passing, the anointing of the Spirit is touching people, destroying yokes, destroying yokes, destroying yokes right now, destroying yokes from my left and my right, destroying yokes, any spirit tying down any man's destiny. Right now, 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 right now. Right now, every spirit, every spirit, every spirit, every spirit, now listen to me, those outside, don't be afraid it will not rain, but watch this, lift your hands, I'm going to walk this way, and the power of the Holy Ghost, you are enduring this rain, as I walk through, any spirit tie your life, must give way right now are you ready right now right now right now right now right now i release everybody from bondage 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 right now i stretch my hands i stretch my hands i stretch my hands right now i stretch my hands i stand by an anointing as i pass your robe any devil tying you will let you go right now as i pass your robe as i pass as I pass your robe, as I pass your robe, as I pass your robe, now, right? Every spirit, every spirit responsible for your limitation you are enduring the rain you cannot go back the same I came out to join you <laughs> hallelujah please make sure you pray I'm moving around we are going to pray for you. Please lift your hands. Make sure you are praying. There's no spirit that will stand. Hallelujah. As many who can come in, don't worry. Just push them in. I know it will be a bit stuffy, but push as many people everywhere and let's pray we have to hurry up just push them as many there are some who may not be able to do much but then we are praying we are praying say after me in the name of Jesus say it again in the name of Jesus every power holding me say it again in the name of Jesus every power holding my breakthrough tonight your time is up go 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 lift your voice and pray pray every power every force Hallelujah. Now, hold on. I know that there are so many people coming in. Just give them room to come in. Just make every adjustment. Not all may be able to come in. But it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. We want to pray for the sick now. Now, please be careful so we don't have people marching on people. Hallelujah. We are going to do two things at the same time. All those who came trusting God for healing, now is your time. Please walk with the protocol, walk with the ushers. I'm going to ask you to come out and stand here. Don't match the people in front. While they are doing that, ushers, begin to pass your prayer request. Begin to pass your prayer request.
There are miracles in the name of Jesus. There are breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. Power to break every chain, break every chain. I sense a strong healing anointing, a strong healing anointing entering this building. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Now we're going to minister to the sick. Please hear me. No matter what the situation is, as you stand right here, I want you to believe God for healing. You've heard the testimonies of people. You've seen the things that God is doing in this place. Don't make the place rowdy. Just be orderly as we pray for you. Just a touch and you return back. We may not have the time to take testimonies. Hallelujah. Please say to me, you will join me. Where's Pastor Jakes? I'm glad to have them around and they'll make this work easy. The anointed people, as we pray for you, I want you to believe God for healing. The moment you are prayed for, as you walk back to your seat, do what you couldn't do before. Don't just sit down and hope you are healed the bible says they came to hear and to be healed they came to hear and to be healed everyone lift your hands in one minute and pray and say every sickness in my body is time for you to go every incurable disease go ahead and pray every incurable disease you are living. Hallelujah. Worship team, you help us while we minister. Pastor Jakes, let me please. We are going to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want you to believe in the God that heals. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Make sure you are praying in tongues. Don't just be whiling away time. Drop your prayer request and be praying. Pray in the Spirit. And say, Lord, you are going to visit me. To break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, this I consider these sessions to be the most powerful. I know that you have to be a man of the spirit to understand all these things, the word of knowledge, ministering to the sick is very important. But sincerely, there is only so much. Are we together? There's only so much. There are thousands of people here and there is only so much you can see. This represents the prayer request of so many people and there are so many others um, online. And this is when we get to give God chance to reveal himself as a God of wonders. Hallelujah. Our time is spent, but I want you to make sure that you participate. We're going to pray on this right now. And then afterwards, um, I'm going to prophesy over our lives. Then we'll take a few announcements and we'll be done. I want you to maximize the night so that you don't go back and return the same. Hallelujah. Before I pray, I, I want, if you can rise, please rise. Those on, under the anointing, that's all right. And then mothers with children, that's all right. But the rest of us, please, let's rise and take this very seriously. We're going to be praying right now. When Pastor Jakes and Ejimi are done, they can come and join us. We'll pray. Pastor Godwin, 
where are you please can you come and join us um, we're going to pray I'd like you to stretch your hands here and in one minute pray like your life depends on it and say the same way I have dropped this that's how I've dropped every challenge in my life I'd like you to pray please pray Koinonia, open your mouth inside outside online please join us we're going to lay our hands prophetically on this request as we lay our hands on them we are releasing the power of God to every home to every territory in the name of the Lord Jesus make sure you pray from the depth of your heart father we agree with you we agree with you all kinds of miracles impossible situations make sure you are praying there is a God that answers prayers. Let fire fall on this request to God. Shakata prakata kataka. Rekata kataka kataka bosh. Maprakata prosoto bosh. Elekata prakata perekoto soprata kataka bosh. Mata shatata kataka kataka bosh. Pray, prophesy. We are speaking over this request. Wipe the tears of people, oh God. Visit individuals, visit families. Strange miracles. Strange miracles. In Dalukos, they looked unto you and they were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Shame is taken away totally and completely. Ah, the embargo is lifted. Ah, I hear God saying, Affliction shall not arise again the second time. Allah, it is done it is done says the spirit of God it is done oh glory be to God go ahead and rejoice and give God praise hallelujah 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 please lift your hands and receive the prophecy this is where God is going to be changing life Hallelujah. Your destiny can change overnight because one word was received. Prophecy does not only reveal, it creates. This is where everybody gets to participate in the service. Take it higher, guys. Inside, outside. This is where I want you to believe. You will rise in his name. I don't know. You reign. You will rise in your name. I don't know. You reign. You Hallelujah. Three weeks ago, I had a very serious encounter with God. 
And the Lord told me something. He said, I have put my word in your mouth. As you speak it, I will make it happen. That's what the Lord told me. Please, I want you to believe it. Oh, blessed is she that believes. Don't sit down and doubt and waste your time. There is a spiritual dimension to life. It's not just, I have taught you principles. Believe me when I tell you there is a spiritual dimension. Gates and doors over the lives and the destinies of men. I pray every gate that must be opened right now I speak to you Efata be open now 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 that chain tying any man's destiny tying the speed of your progress you are moving but you are not making impact right now I release upon you an auction for speed an auction take it an auction for speed an auction for speed the Bible says and the hand of the Lord please help them the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah he gathered his loins and ran on barefoot he overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel I don't know what you have done from January to now but I prophesy from now till the end of June do what you have not done in five years shake it, 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 it. Do what you have not done in five years. Do what you have not done in five years. Hallelujah. Jacob dug a well and they covered it. They dug another one. They covered it. They dug the third one and they left it and they called it Rehoboth. They said God has given us our space. Where you have been begging for relevance it's like there is no place for you in life it's like there is no place i stand under this apostolic and prophetic mantle take your place in life take your place in destiny take your place in ministry take your place in destiny take your place in ministry Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. whatever has covered your glory whatever has covered your glory I stand tonight I invoke the powers of the heavens and I command let your glory be released now be released now be released now anyone here called jobless between now and the next two months I don't care what is the reason but I pray as surely as the God of heaven lives we give you a job here now we give you a job here now we give you a job here now it says to appoint unto them that morning sign listen there are some of us you are making progress but no help in your life you fight for everything by yourself you pay for everything by yourself when you are in trouble there's nobody to speak for you at the gates where are your helpers who stopped them from entering your life who said it must be this hard i go down on my knees i call your helpers by prophecy in the name of jesus from the north to the south to the east to the west from the north to the south to the east to the west from the north to the south to 
the east to the west receive of their ministry listen let me tell you there is nothing more tragic as having no helper no man can stand alone you need voices to speak to you at the gates of destiny you need men to endorse you and say help him you can't have to explain yourself to everybody who is speaking for you I pray again whoever must appear in your life from now till June business help us financial help us marital help us career help us I call you for I call you for hallelujah listen lift your hands there are some of you your dreams and visions used to be opportunities for intense revelation where God will show you secrets it made your life easy till something shot you from visions and dreams I pray every dead dream life every dead manifestation of visions like a mantle receive restoration now restoration of dreams prophetic dreams visions prophetic vision hallelujah please stretch your hands towards me please stretch your hands towards me the hands of a man represent your responsibility represents your wisdom represents your agency for bread I pray for you whatever has mocked the creativity of your hands so that your potentials are underutilized Isaiah 48 verse 17 I am the Lord that teaches thy hands to profit I pray the grace that makes your hand productive take it now take it now take it now take it now the grace that makes your hand multiply take it now everything called barren in your destiny physical barrenness spiritual barrenness academic barrenness career barrenness right now I cause the spirit of barrenness from his root and I command be fruitful be fruitful be fruitful hallelujah lift your hands in the next one minute I want us to pray because everyone will receive something listen listen what we're all receiving is an upgrade of grace listen he said grace be multiplied grace and peace be multiplied the grace upon a man's life can multiply should multiply must multiply there are three things that happen to you when God lifts you one he multiplies your grace two he adds to your responsibility three he increases your territory of influence both spiritually and physically I pray for you lift your hands some of us you have not backslidden but you have not risen beyond certain levels you have stayed there at a level everything that is alive grows please I want you to receive I told you this meeting will have impartations the impartation is not falling on the ground and rolling impartation is receiving something tangible in your spirit hallelujah Paul said I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift he said to the end that he be established I pray for you lift your hands every grace that is dormant in your life every grace 
that is useful but it has stayed at a level and is made no matter how you try to rise it stands there in the name of jesus by the privilege of the apostolic office i pray for you may that grace be upgraded now shake it receive it receive it take it an upgrade of favor an upgrade of wisdom an upgrade of power fire power fire fire prayer fire what fire prayer fire what fire an upgrade of supernatural wisdom an upgrade of access access to men of influence I pray for you listen what your current level of grace could not bring you into I empower you to go back and conquer that realm oh let me repeat what I'm saying there are levels in life and there are graces that are like keys you can get to a level and be stuck there no matter what kind of deliverance you can stay there because graces are like flights they can take you beyond certain levels some of us just need a little upgrade to overcome the obstacles you have tried prayer has brought you so far i pray for you whatever dimension must be added so that you can fly like the eagle that you are receive that dimension now receive that dimension now receive that dimension now hallelujah the bible says and you shall be called with a new name which the mouth of the lord shall speak it says you shall be called hefziba and Pula, a well desired land i pray for you everything that makes people run away from you they plan to help you but when they come they change their mind they plan to bless you but when they see you they consider what they are about to sow there is a spirit that cuts short breakthroughs i pray for you in the name of jesus i pray the blessing that was prophesied he said to jacob the smell of my son is like the field that the lord has blessed that aura that attracts favor receive it right now receive it right now whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise may that prayer be answered let me say it again whoever vowed and said it is through his dead body you will rise I said may that prayer be answered listen the Bible says in five things the Lord will deliver you he said yes six he will deliver you from the scourging tongues of men it was a revelation that was given Job that men stay and use their tongues to trap the destinies of men I pray for you whoever has used his tongue like a net to trap your life I release you right now I release you right now I release you right now hallelujah the kind of finances your hands has not touched I pray for you between now and the end of this month may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes anyone here marked for death that death is eyeing you waiting for the day you will get on the road waiting for the day a bike will come close to you to kill you and take your life i pray for you in the name of jesus we forbid the earth from receiving your body we forbid the earth from receiving your body there are five elements i'm rounding up that are the conduits through which the supernatural finds expression on earth five elements all through scripture the supernatural cannot manifest on earth 
without the instrumentality of these five elements number one is light god is light the entrance of thy word give it light let there be light number two water the fish and the birds of the end genesis came out of water water represents abundance number three fire hallelujah it's a mysterious instrument not threatened by any other element yet refines every other number four wind the mystery of sound the mystery that takes sounds and realities he said i prophesied as i was commanded and there was a sound that sound came back in acts chapter 2 a sound hallelujah and the last element is the earth the prophet said oh earth hear you the word of the lord he said for from dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return hear me i want to pray just one deep mystery for you the earth is a universal point of contact every man makes contact with it for you to be alive you must make contact with the earth your feet must touch the ground your helper's feet is touching this ground you are touching no 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 no. it's not amen it's a mystery the office where you are to be employed is on this ground it's not in the air hear me please the bank that holds the favor you are looking for has contact with this earth and the prophet said oh earth you are a living thing you are not just stones hallelujah are we together hmm. it says they will not be able to oppress you because you have made a covenant with the stones i pray for you whoever wants to disfavor you just like the stars fought for deborah may the earth fight for you may the earth fight for you quarter to shame may a mystery manifest that you don't understand to bail you out listen when men say let's see what will become of him i pray a mystery my goodness another way may god bring another mystery and deliver you in the name of jesus The heat and the turmoil in Nigeria. We love our nation. We pray for them. And we pray sincerely out of a sense of nationhood. But I pray for you. The mystery of exemption that can exempt a man. It says for when men say there is a casting down. For you, you will say there is a lifting up. I prophesy a lifting up. Regardless of the recession, this is still your year of multiplied grace and growth. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give God thanks. Thank Him sincerely. Lord, we thank you for your word. Listen, I want you to go back realizing what happened to you. Don't be like the man who looks at himself at the mirror and leaves and forgets. These prophecies have come upon you like a mantle. You enforce them in the place of prayer. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.